One of the easiest ways to add life to any scene in Blender is to make sure that you have dynamic objects in it. Now this can range from a bunch of different things, from animated characters to rain to neon signs, blinking cars going by, but one of the most common ones is through nature assets. A problem I see pretty commonly is that someone will have a scene with an animation going and whenever they press play, you've got a tree and it just doesn't move at all which is so unrealistic, even when it's not a windy day, your trees are gonna move just a little tiny bit because there's always a little bit of wind going on. So one way to make your environment just look a little bit more natural is to add wind to it. This is so quick and easy. If we go to the modifiers tab, there's a few ways we can do this, but the, if we go to the modifiers tab and we choose add modifier, let's go to deform, displace, and then add a new texture you'll see that we get this displacement of our tree. Now I'm gonna set this to something like 0.2 maybe. And then if I go down to the textures and I choose clouds, what I can do is I can press I on the size and if we go on the dope sheet, open this up and we just have this thing playing. We can change our size again to a different slot. And once we press play, you'll see we get some slight movement along our textures. Now this is a very fast movement. So what I may wanna do is Make sure to set this to a higher number, like uh, 0.6. And then we can just have this light amount of uh, moving leaves from our trees. And you may notice it moves a little bit, you know, on the bark, but it's hardly noticeable, so I don't mind it. Um, of course, if you want to make it a little bit more powerful, you can increase the strength and you'll have a little bit more movement. One way to get a little more specific on what moves and what doesn't, if we want, we can select our main tree or we can select it with our materials. So I could select all these branches, these main large branches, and I could assign them to a vertex group, sign. And then in the uh, displacement modifier, we can add that vertex group. And now you'll see that only these are moving. Now, obviously I want the opposite. So if you did backwards like me, you can of course click on the vertex group and select it, then choose remove. And then next, if you press control I, you'll select everything else and you can assign it to that. And then of course we can just press play. And now only the leaves are gonna be moving and the tree bark does not move. Super simple fix and it adds a quick amount of life into any sort of nature scene. Now, another great thing about this is if we add in a plane and we give it a particle system or geometry nodes, and then I can, of course, instance all my geometry using geometry nodes and or uh, the particle system. I prefer geometry nodes. This is the setup. It's simply geometry to a distribute points on faces. I usually go with poison disk uh, into an instance on points node and to the geometry output. If you want the original geometry to be visible, you can just give it a join geometry node and bring it back in like that. And then you plug your instance objects, such as my grass, into the instance. You can give it some random value vector for the scale and the, or the rotation, and you can give it a random value for the scale as well. And that's just a simple distributor. And then once I have that, I can of course go to the original grass object, which is this one over here, and I can do the exact same thing, deform, displace, and I'll give it that same texture so that it has that same waviness going on. Now you get these waving grass uh, objects, and they just look a little bit more realistic than having grass that doesn't wave. Now, of course, you don't have to do this in geometry nodes or in the displacement editor. We can always just go do this on the material. So let me just delete this out, and I'm going to add in a displacement. I'm going to plug it into the displacement output on the material output. I'm just going to add a noise texture plug it into the height and I got to make sure to turn on displacement and bump. And then I could, if I wanted to set this to 4D or just change the scale over time, I'm going to change the scale to something like 0.5. And I am just pretty much going to change this scale over time. So what I can do is add in a value node, set it to hashtag frame divided by 200 and plug it into the W slot. And if I press play, I'll get um, some blowing wind. Now, of course, if I change the scale over here, we'll get it so it uh, changes a lot more. <laughs> Hashtag frame dot 200, I need divided by. So uh, what's gonna happen now is we have that, that blowing wind. And if I wanted to be faster, I can add in a math node. I can set it to multiply and put it after the value node. And then of course I can set this to a higher value and I'll get a faster wobbly wind. And there we go, we can very quickly see this grass uh, blown in the wind. If you wanted to as well, you can also set it up so that the grass only blows up top. 
Um, so what I would do, one, I, I might need to subdivide this a little bit so that the displacement happens uh, only the top half. And then, of course, I can add a mix color node, add in a gradient texture, and I can plug this into the bottom. We can set it to multiply and turn the factor all the way up. And then if I add in some mapping coordinates, plug object mode in, and we can flip it by 90 degrees on the y-axis so that your gradient texture goes up and down. You'll see if I uh, change it like this. There we go. And essentially what that does is make it so only the top half moves. Now obviously uh, this is a bit extreme in terms of uh, the way that this looks. So uh, one, I can move it downward a little bit by uh, raising the x-axis and then you'll get a little bit more of a fair fall off here. I can change my scale so it's a little bit less intense as well. And I'm just going to change this to be faster so we get a lot more waviness. Maybe change my overall scale a little bit, get a little bit more jittery. And there you go. You can just play with these settings. I always love making something into a node group. So I might just select this, press Shift G, and then we have my, my wind node group. I can protect it so that it doesn't get deleted. And then I'll just plug my speed out. I can create a combine XYZ, plug it into the location value of my, uh, my gradient texture. And then I can plug this X coordinate out here. I can get my displacement scale plugged out and my noise texture scale. And then under the group inputs, we can change these values. So value, this multiply value controls the speed. This X value controls our height clamp. This scale controls the uh, displacement amount. So displacement, and then this scale controls my noise scale, which I'm gonna call jitter. Because as you continue to make this value bigger, it gets a lot more jittery. Look, we can see it gets a lot more jittery there, but if I change this to point 2, we get a much smoother kind of wind. Now you may notice it's a little it's a little strange sometimes, and that might be because this is plugged into the W slot. If we wanted to make it maybe a little bit more natural, we could also plug this speed value instead of the W slot just into the location of a mapping coordinate connected to the noise texture, and it'll be a little bit more predictable in terms of kind of what's going on. But as you can see, that's a uh, that's creating a little bit of an odd sort of repetitive look. So for one, I'm going to change this to object mode so that all of these things are different per object. And I am going to plug this both into the location and into the seed to get a little bit of randomization. And finally, I'm going to make sure that my displacement is a nice good amount. And yeah, we should have a little bit of a random jitteriness. Now, of course, you can add multiple dead grass or grass in general, uh, pieces into this and give them all different timings on their displacement and uh, yeah you'll get a different effect but it's really just a way to quickly add life into your environments and um, it really takes no work at all there's no reason you shouldn't be doing it because it's basically just going to help make your scene look more alive you don't need wind that's going absolutely crazy as you can see you know this this is pretty low-key wind but it's um it's helping to make this environment look a little bit more realistic. If you've enjoyed the video and you want more videos, go check out my channel. Also, go consider following me on Patreon. I post a bunch more tutorials, long form, usually about 20, 30 minutes or above, all about creating environments, shaders, and other effects in Blender. If you're interested in some of my pre-made assets, then go over to my Gumroad or my Blender Market page and go check them out. Consider downloading them. I hope you guys have enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next video.